Amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning and God bless you, Shiloh. Oh, my goodness. I praise the Lord for this amazing opportunity, this privilege to stand before you kings and priests today. Oh, my goodness. To bring you the word of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday. I just want to take this moment to, to honor and to praise God for this privilege to stand before you. Um, I praise Bishop, I honor Bishop for everything that he does for us and, and, and leading us and guiding us and helping us and I just praise God for him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise God for uh, my wife and my mom who came to visit this weekend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I honor them and I honor and I praise God for every one of you that made it today. I love you guys. I really do. And I'm excited to stand before you today. Hallelujah. Let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to, we just want to take this moment to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for everything you are, everything you do, everything you've done. Thank you for another wonderful day to seek you, to serve you, to hear your heart, Lord God, to hear your voice. We just ask that you would open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to your word, to your truth, and to your love, that we may know you better, that we may love you deeper, and that we would share your word and truth and love and in faith with everybody that we're given given the opportunity to, Lord, I pray that you would help me decrease so that you can increase, Lord God, prep our hearts to receive the word that you've given to us, Lord. As Pastor LaShawn said, whether it makes us say amen or ouch, Lord, let us receive it, Lord, and let it be for our, for our good, that we may grow in holiness and righteousness, that we may glorify you in everything that we say, do, and think while we're here, Lord God, while you still got us on the clock, on on the job until you tell us it's time to come home, Lord God. We want you to be glorified in our lives, Lord. So we humble ourselves before you, and we just ask that you would have your way today. Bless many, save many, heal many, and I thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, I stand before you today with a great weight on my heart. This week for me has been full of battles and challenges, encounters and experiences. And I'm here to testify that no matter what, in every situation, good and bad, God is with you. God is for you and not against you. He is the one holding you up when you've done all that you can do to stand in an evil day. His grace is sufficient when things aren't going the way that you hoped they would. Man, listen, the enemy had me on the ropes this week. He hit me with a mean haymaker that put me down on the canvas. It was truly ugly. On a 10 count, he got the, the ref got to eight. And by the grace of God, I'm back on my feet before you swinging. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what round I'm in right now, but I'm fighting the good fight of faith, and I'm walking in the victory that I've already been given in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can God get another glorious hand clap praise for his keeping power? He is worthy. He is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With that being said, I've got a lot of time this week to spend with the Lord uh, in prayer and in, in Bible study and just seeking the Lord's heart. I've, I've got to examine myself and I've got to examine uh, a lot of things this week. I was reading in the book of uh, Jeremiah, I've been reading in the book of Jeremiah, and I've been so torn back and forth because in this book, you're able to see just how much God loves us and just how horrible we truly have been to God. And it's just beautiful that despite all the things we do not to deserve his love, he loves us anyways. 
All the things we do to deserve him to give us that bill of divorce, to deserve him to, to, to cast us away, he still says, I'm here for you, I love you, I'm willing to forgive you, I'm willing to start brand new again right now, let's do it. And, and, and it, I was in this place where I'm just torn because I have this overwhelming joy of the love of God in my heart, but I have this overwhelming grief of the, the, the craziness that we do to each other and to God. Mm. So with that being said, let me dive right into my message because I do have a few things that the Lord has led me to address today. Um, listen, I've seen some beautiful, uplifting and outstanding, encouraging things in the church this season. Hallelujah. Especially here at Shiloh, all the, uh, the 90 days summer of praise and everything, uh, street soldiers and the community, the, the things that God is building within us, the, oh, it's absolutely amazing. But lately I've been deeply grieved as I get closer to the heart of God about some of the things concerning the body of Christ on a local and national scale. Especially in light of the recent presidential election, as well as social, cur uh, current social, civil, and political matters. I've been blown away at the amount of division and discord, the scoffing, the mocking, the accusation and condemnation, the name calling, the backbiting, the bitterness and betrayal in the church at large. To be a little more specific on a few situations, I won't go in great, uh, great detail. But, you know, there's been a few situations where the church has been wishing death and praying death on the president and anybody who supports him. They're, exactly. Witchcraft, plain as day. And, and so that's, that, that deeply grieved me. I don't, I don't care whether you like him as a man. But he is the leader. He is the president right now. You know what I'm saying? And the word says to pray for your leadership. Not to mention he's a human being with a, with a wife and with children, with a family, with people that look to him uh, for support and, and love. Why would we wish death upon a man like that? We may not, people may not like him, but never. The Bible never tells us to wish death on anybody. As a matter of fact, it says pray for those that, that hate you. Bless those who curse you. So I'm saying I'm seeing these things and I'm grieved deeply. There's prophets who have come forth and have prophesied that He's going to get another four years. And because the media has come forth and prematurely declared a candidate, okay, for presidency, church folk are coming forth calling these people false prophets, mocking them, scoffing them, tearing them down, trying to silence the mouth of those who are speaking boldly in faith on what they believe God told them wishing death upon them as well. This is horrible. This should never be the case. And this is just a few of the chaotic things that are going around with the carnal responses to the things that are going on. I am grieved because I perceive that God is displeased with how easily we are coerced into the out of character and so venomously turned against one another behind matters of this world. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise to see the world acting like this, but to see the church acting like this. And behaving this way is truly upsetting. It begs the question, where is the grace? Where is the love? Where is the kindness? Where is the humility and gentleness that is supposed to be so, so 
bountifully on display in the house, the family, and the kingdom of God. When the world sees the church, what do they see? Unfortunately, a consistent report from the outside looking in is that it's a real turnoff. A lot of people lost and saved say they wouldn't darken the door of a church building because of the way we treat each other in this world. Mm. They look in and they see so much dysfunction, gossip, bitterness, unthankfulness, complaining, betrayal, unforgiveness, prejudice, racism, hypocrisy, and all manner of ungodliness. It's a shame that most people think that this is fake or a front that we just put on because unfortunately there are a lot of people faking and fronting and playing Christianity. Having a form of godliness but denying the power to bring true transformation to the hearts and lives of God's people. This should not be the case. So what should they see? What should they see when they look in the church? The world looking into the church should see a representation, even a reflection of God's heart. A glimpse of heaven on earth. The closest thing you'll ever find to a utopia should be right here. We should be the most loving, graceful, merciful, patient, humble, thankful, gentle, truthful, kind, forgiving, understanding, selfless, compassionate, generous, sacrificial, long-suffering, faithful, prayerful, unified people on the entire planet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be a dynamic, spirit-filled, multicultural, multiracial, multi-generational church full of power and praise, speaking restoration to this generation, growing daily in number, impacting our city, our nation, and our world for Christ by discovering, developing, and deploying bold Christ-like believers to reach out and share their faith in God through their relationship with Jesus Christ. Proclaiming God's unfailing love to his people by reaching out to the non-churched, the alienated, the forgotten, to encourage, empower, and strengthen people to become spiritually mature disciples, bringing pastors and leaders together to take regions and territories for Christ. The dark hour that we live in, this dark time is the time that the light of Christ should shine in us the brightest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I understand that this is a high calling. I understand that this is high expectations. Neither I nor God expects it to be executed perfectly at all times. He knows, as we all should, that we are a body of imperfect people being perfected. I'm going to let you down from time to time. I'm not going to be as kind as I should all the time. I, I might not be as generous as I should all the time. I might not be as compassionate all the time, but I should be exceedingly abundantly more than the world is. Each one of us should. And maybe we didn't start out that way, but we should grow and go from glory to glory to glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are all at different levels of maturity with different backgrounds and different convictions, learning to operate together on one accord and of one mind, having compassion for one another, loving as brothers, being tenderhearted and courteous, as it tells us in 1 Peter 3, 8. We should be an unmistakable, there should be an unmistakable and undeniable distinction between the world and the church. And sometimes the, the lines are so blurred you couldn't tell the difference. How we respond 
and behave as it relates to matters of this world. How to be in the world but not of the world, we should lead by example. How to think with a renewed mind, not conform to the pattern of this world, rather with thinking with the mind of Christ, operating with the spirit of meekness and gentleness and grace towards each other and even to the lost, lest we be tempted or provoked to pride and self-righteousness or bringing unnecessary offense to an already offensive gospel. Now I ask you brothers and sisters now or in your own time, your alone time with the Lord to truly examine yourselves, audit your actions and behaviors, your motives and your approaches. Ask yourselves this question, are you contributing to the positive or to the negative perception that the world has of the church? Every day we got to examine ourselves. We got to examine ourselves and see how did I handle things yesterday and how can I do better today because I want to be a blessing to this world. We should be a blessing to this world. I was reading in Daniel and it says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. All right. It says that Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because of his excellent spirit that was in him, that the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The presidents and the princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning their kingdom. OK, but they couldn't find anything to fault him. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there error or fault found in him. We should, we should be at that point. We should, we should grow to that point where we are a blessing everywhere we go. Bishop always shares that, you know, uh, if you leave a job, they shouldn't say good riddance, but they should, be, they should be hurt that you're leaving. You should be such a blessing on that job that they're going to miss you. You should have such an impact that, you know, the bishop just said, you know, he hasn't seen me all week and it was different. You know what I'm saying? It, it shouldn't, it should be amazing. You should have such an impact in the people around you's lives that if you're not there, you're missed greatly. Even more. What if when you're on your job or at your school or in your family, when you're not there, it feels like God's not there. Why? Because you carry the presence of God everywhere you go. They have an amazing peace when they are in your presence. I praise God because many friends uh, lost and saved have said, you know, I love coming to your house because at your house, the chaos that I deal with out here in the world, it's gone. I don't have to watch my back at your house. I don't have to fear or worry about these things going on uh, at your house. I'm at peace there. He said, why is there so much peace there? And I said, because this is the the Lord's house okay this is this is the king the kingdom of God is here and that's how it should be first Peter 4 17 says for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God for if it first begins with us what shall be the end of those that do not obey the gospel of God God wants us to judge ourselves. I always tell my sons, I'd rather you correct you than I have to correct you. If you make a mess, I'd rather you clean it up than you have to, you know, get reprimanded for not doing so. I want you to fix your mistakes. I want you to make things right. I don't want to have to rebuke you. I don't want to have to correct you. I want you to be so in tune with me that you'll know dad don't like that. That's displeasing to my father. And in the same way, that's how we should be. 
We should, we should, if we said something rude or disrespectful to our brothers or sisters, we should, by the, by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, say, goodness, Lord, please forgive me. And we should seek reconciliation. From time to time, we get in the flesh, but you can definitely tell when you've been in the flesh because there's a nagging that takes place. There should be at least. So, judgment begins at the house of God. He's going to deal, deal with his children. When my kids are out playing at the park and, they're, and, and, and all the kids are throwing rocks at cars and, and breaking stuff, I'm not going to go deal with all these other kids. First, I'm going to deal with my children because my children are my responsibility. All right? Now, the other kids might hear me dealing with them and it's going to correct them in the process and in the same way God dealing with you all the rest of the world's going to see it and it might it might straighten them up too all right but God would rather us do that. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 through 32 tells us, for if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. He disciplines us, he corrects us, he reproves and rebukes us so that he doesn't have to deal with us in the heap of everybody in his wrath because we're not appointed to wrath. We're not appointed to wrath. He has so much more for us. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 3, 2 through 3, he says, you are our epistle, our letter, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tablets of stone, but in fleshy tablets of the heart. Brothers and sisters, Christian, the world is watching you. Church, the world is watching us. They are constantly reading the letter and the testimony of your life. Not just what you say, but what you do. Thank you, Lord. Listen, they're judging us. And more importantly, they're judging God based off of your exemplification of him. They're looking at you, his children, and they're saying, if that's what your dad acts like, is that how your dad raised you? Okay. Is that how your father raised you? It falls back on him, even though he's not to blame. Even though we couldn't by any means tarnish who he is, but their perception, we can tarnish their perception of him. If my kids are out here acting up, acting a fool, going crazy, they're going to look at me. Why are your kids out of control? All right, because they're my responsibility. So what am I going to do? I'm going to discipline them. I'm going to correct them. I'm going to get them in order. If the world determined whether they would come to Jesus based off of your re representation of him on earth, would they be repulsed? Or would they be intrigued and attracted to him? Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He was the visible and is the visible image of the invisible God, the physical manifestation of the word, the love, and the glory of God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father also.
In like manner, he said to his disciples, and in turn to us in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, he said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. He said, neither do men light a candle and hide it under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick that it may give light to all that are in the house. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Don't you want God to be glorified in your life? In the things that you say, the things that you do? We are ambassadors, representatives of Christ, of God, and of the kingdom of heaven. In this dark hour, this is the time for us to shine like never before. That the world may see the glory of God in the body of Christ. Just as Jesus was the physical representation of the Father on earth. We are the physical representation of Christ on earth. We are his hands and feet. We are his body. When they see us, they should see him. To know us is to know him. Paul told us in Philippians 2, 14 through 16, do all things without murmuring and disputes that you may be blameless and harmless. The children of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain hallelujah hallelujah he wants us to grow in such an amazing way that we can get over these disputes that we can get over these complaints and these murmurings okay we can have disagreements but when you hate your brother or sister when you wish ill will on your brother and sister because of these worldly matters these carnal things of which we should have a better understanding we should know why things are the way they are. We're living in a fallen, sinful world. There's going to be these things going on. It's not, it's not, the world's not going to look like the kingdom should. But we don't have that excuse. We are in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, but we are to be in the world, but not of the world. To shine as lights in the world. Brothers and sisters, I knew I wasn't going to be here before you long because this is pretty much straight and to the point. But I want you, in light of what I just said, to take a look at the beauty of God's heavenly creation. The moon and the stars, they shine so bright against the dark backdrop drop of the night sky. And God strategically orchestrated it that way to be an example for us of how we should be against the backdrop of the darkness of this world. A beautiful diamond or gem is presented on a dark blue or black pad to accentuate its beauty all the more as the light reflects off of the gem in contrast to its background. In the same way, the light of Christ should shine in and through us, especially when it's the darkest in this world. And when there seems to be no hope, we are the ones that God has placed here to show the world the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now humbly 
and thankfully with a heart of repentance we are so sorry that we've been so messed up to each other Lord it's so easy to fall into the flesh Lord you you walked in the flesh you knew you know the word says that You've been tempted in every way we've been tempted, yet, th yet without sin. You know the, the things that we go through in this world, and I'm not making any excuses, Lord. We're just coming to you humbly and apologizing, Lord, for what we've done to you and what we've done to each other. Lord, we want to glorify you. We want our light to shine so bright while we're here, Lord God. We want to have the best relationships with people. We want to be a blessing to those who we are around, Lord God. We want to be a, a, a help, an encouragement, a beautiful light in this world. We want them to see heaven when they see us. We want you to be glorified in your children. That they would be delighted to say, I want to know your father. Because if he's anything like you, I'm running to him. Give us an increase in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. A fresh outpouring. Help us to remain gentle and meek before you and before others. Lord, we pray for the president, for the governments, for all candidates, for all leadership in and outside of the church. We ask that you would have your way in their lives, that your will would be done, that wickedness would be exposed, not just to us, but to the hearts of the individuals doing it, that they would repent. Put people in their lives that would love them enough to tell the truth that would love them enough to preach the gospel to them. Put people in their lives that are leading by example, kingdom kids, kingdom men and women that would show them the way. Help us to be patient and loving and kind. Lord, I ask for a fresh fire, a fresh anointing upon every one of us seek you let our first response in any dispute or situation be prayer because you're able to dismantle even the 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 deepest griefs and the the deepest offenses lord god you're able you've given us great ability that we don't have to hold grudges that we can let them go your word says cast your cares upon you for you care for us Lord you are truly amazing and we are humble what love you have shed upon us that we should be called your children and that we should be your representatives your ambassadors here on earth Lord help us to do that faithfully Strengthen us for the battles ahead. Your word says, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Lord, we want to please you. We love to feel you smiling down on us. Let that be an everyday situation. Help us give you more and more reasons to smile. You are worthy. You are worthy of all the honor, 
all the praise, all the glory. Lord, I thank you for you. I thank you for my brothers and sisters here in the church, here in the congregation. Lord, I ask that you would bless them abundantly. Anybody that doesn't know you, Lord, lead them to somebody that would introduce you to them. Bring them to me. I'll tell them all about you. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, is there anybody here today that does not know the Lord that would like to be introduced to him? I would love to do the honors. Is there anybody who hasn't been baptized that would like to be baptized? Is there anybody that needs prayer for any reason? If you've been convicted by this message, if you need healing in your body, if you know somebody, uh, friends or family that, that needs healing or needs provision, needs protection, needs restoration, anything, come forward. Amen. God bless you. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to shilohub.org. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.